Just days ago, the first launch of Starship marked one of, if not the biggest moments in the program's history. However, with this launch now complete, it brings up the question of what is next for Starship and Starbase in particular. A lot of things have changed in a short period of time, including damage to important infrastructure at the site and the use of both Booster 7 and Ship 24, just to name a few. All this being said, SpaceX is still confident that in just a few months' time, they will be ready to launch again. Recently, we learned more about the company's plan to repair the orbital launch mount and install a unique system to withstand and deflect the power of Super Heavy's 33 Raptor engines. This is especially important after that one issue caused a ripple effect of other complications during the launch. While SpaceX may have misjudged the impact this initial launch would have on Stage 0, they're ready to begin work and make it better than it was before. Here I'll go more in depth into the company's plans for Stage 0, what improvements have been made to the next Starship test article, the future of this program, and more. As many people have seen by now, the first launch of Starship caused a decent bit of damage to the surrounding pad infrastructure, otherwise known as Stage 0. For around 8 seconds, Starship was on the pad firing its engines onto the concrete below. This ended up destroying the foundation of the mount and sending concrete projectiles in every direction at immense speeds. These projectiles are thought to have caused some damage to the Starship rocket itself as well as nearby pad structures such as the propellant tank farm. Yesterday, Elon clarified with a tweet saying, Three months ago, we started building a massive water-cooled steel plate to go under the launch mount. Wasn't ready in time, and we wrongly thought, based on static fire data, that Fondag would make it through one launch. Looks like we can be ready to launch again in one to two months. This tweet is very important, but there's a lot to unpack. For one, when Elon says they thought that the Fondag would make it through one launch, he's referring to a unique type of concrete. Specifically, Fondag is a special type of concrete designed to be resistant to fire, abrasion, corrosion, or thermal shock. It's formulated using specific aluminum oxide binders and synthetic aggregates. In other words, it's a much stronger and more capable concrete mixture. Unfortunately, as the recent launch demonstrated, it was nowhere near strong enough to resist the power of 33 Raptor engines firing at practically full thrust. This being said, SpaceX did have reason to believe that it could have held up based on recent static fires as mentioned in Elon's tweet. Just months ago in February, while preparing for the recent full launch, SpaceX completed a 31 Raptor engine static fire of Super Heavy. In total, the static fire lasted around 7 seconds, which was similar to the amount of time that they expected Starship to be on the pad before liftoff. The main difference, however, was the thrust of the engines. During this test, the Raptor engines were not performing at the maximum thrust and instead were slightly toned down. While the pad below still sustained some minor damages, it's likely that this gave SpaceX some confidence that the Fondag would at least, for the most part, withstand an actual launch attempt. Obviously, we know now that was not the case at all. Another big part of this tweet was a solution that's expected to be ready in only a month or two. Here, Elon referred to a massive water-cooled steel plate that would go under the launch mount. In regard to this, parts for the mentioned flame diverter have already been fabricated, and were seen and filmed on the site before the test flight occurred. This confirms that the system was definitely in the works and was already nearing completion, however not quite fast enough for SpaceX. They decided to forego the extra system, which ended up not being the best decision, but not catastrophic. From what we know, the system will consist of multiple large steel plates separated by spacers with water flowing in between as a coolant. In the coming weeks, it'll be interesting to see how exactly SpaceX designs and angles the system under the orbital launch mount. Not only did we learn more about why SpaceX launched with just concrete under the rocket and what system will soon replace this, but we also got an estimate from Elon that they'll be ready to launch in one to two months. It's important to point out that this number should be taken with a grain of salt, as Elon is usually quite ambitious regarding future timeframes and deadlines. This being said, the next rocket and a lot of work is already well underway. For example, in a recent interview, Elon said, The funny thing is, we are actually dying to get this rocket off no matter what happens to it, because there are so many improvements between Booster 7 and Booster 9, literally hundreds. We move from hydraulic thrust vector control to electric, the entire heat shield structure is completely redesigned, and more. Almost all of these changes are complete and ready to begin testing. Although, before any of the testing can happen of these improved systems, the pad will need to be fixed, which is a decent sized job. In another tweet, Eric Berger reported that, The damage in Boca Chica at the Starbase launch site looks pretty serious, but a former senior SpaceXer from there says he believes that the pad can be repaired, and a water-cooled flame diverter installed in 4-6 to six months, just passing on what I was told. This time estimate could be much more realistic. A lot of work needs to be done at stage zero, including fixing the massive crater and especially the mount itself. Various images highlight that the Raptor engines managed to strip the concrete from the surrounding foundation, leaving just rebar behind. Unfortunately, it seems that in the coming months, the next rocket will be ready to begin testing, but stage zero will not. Before this new water-cooled steel plate can be properly installed, the entire launch mount will need work. 
In addition to this, it's very likely that we see a proper water deluge system installed as well. The primary reason for a water deluge system is to reduce extreme heat damage to the launch structure. However, it also serves to suppress sound waves that can damage the vehicle upon launch. In the past, we've seen SpaceX working on this exact system and beginning to receive parts for one. As for the next launch license, SpaceX should be in the clear going forward from Boca Chica. Since the 2022 Programmatic Environmental Assessment, SpaceX provided the FAA with additional information regarding Starship's planned landing, Super Heavy's planned soft water landing, and the launch pad detonation suppression system. The FAA published a written reevaluation, which evaluated, based on this new information, whether supplemental environmental analysis is needed to support the FAA Office of Commercial Space Transportation decision to issue a vehicle operator license to SpaceX for the operation of the Starship slash Super Heavy launch vehicle at its existing Boca Chica launch site in Cameron County, Texas. In the written reevaluation, the FAA concluded that the issuance of a vehicle operator license for Starship slash Super Heavy operations conforms to the prior environmental documentation that the data collected in the late 2022 programmatic environmental assessment remain substantially valid, that there are no significant environmental changes, and all conditions and requirements of the prior approval have been met or will be met in the current action. Therefore, the preparation of a supplemental or new environmental document is not necessary to support the proposed action. In a statement, the FAA said, After a comprehensive license evaluation process, the FAA determined SpaceX met all safety, environmental, policy, payload, airspace integration, and financial responsibility requirements. The license is valid for five years. With this being the case, it's now on SpaceX to prepare for the next launch. Going forward, this should help significantly as the main factor will be how fast SpaceX can launch rather than regulations and approval. It's also important to point out that SpaceX is working on another site for Starship in Cape Canaveral. While Boca Chica and Starbase are great, the company sees the site as the early test grounds for Starship where they can rapidly iterate and blow up test articles. However, in the future, they see the site in Florida as the future of Starship and consistent launch operations. Thankfully, as they build up that site, they will have invaluable information on what exactly works and doesn't work when it comes to the launch site infrastructure, something we can look forward to not too long from now. SpaceX has a lot on its plate after the first launch of Starship. They know now that Fondag will not withstand even a single launch and a new system is needed. They will now work to repair the damage sustained to stage zero and install the proper system to control the exhaust of the world's most powerful rocket. In the coming weeks, we can expect more updates on everything going on at Starbase and what to expect in the future. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.